Every day I enter this shop via this horrific set of stairs. They're made out of some bucket grade particle board and OSB that my kids have colored and spilled on, and the joints are haphazardly toenailed in. Not exactly inspiring creativity is the first thing you see in the morning. My plan is to rebuild them out of walnut with a river of epoxy that waterfalls down the stairs. I can create this effect by making a panel with the epoxy river and then slicing it into the set of rise and run portions. I'll pick the piece that's going to make up the river and bring it down to size on the miter saw. Now true live edge pieces were much too thick and expensive for this project so I'm going to cut my own. Yes some grain will get interrupted by the faux live edge but this will have to do. I'll use this real live edge slab to trace out the more natural set of curves. I can't use this actual slab yet anyway, it's still too wet. It makes sense to get one face and one edge jointed now. Quick tip, make sure your mobile base is set to the not move position before you start jointing. And if you feel something off when you're using any power tool, just stop and figure it out rather than trying to push through. Now I'll rip that opposite edge on the table saw. I'll cut out the middle river with two continuous passes on the bandsaw. After constructing and waxing this melamine form, I'll pour that middle river in one shot. I took this down to the basement to do this pour as the last time I did a pour in the shop. I took all the necessary dust precautions and got everything nice and clean, but this guy wanted a closer look and now he's a permanent part of my shop furniture. I'll use a blowtorch to pop any bubbles and hang out with this thing for about an hour to watch for any leaks. About two days later, I took it to the shop to do a demold. And pulling out the screws, I started to get pretty nervous as I noticed three leaks, but it came out of the form with no problem. I think the porosity of the particle board within the melamine actually helped to soak up the leaks and not let them drip off onto the floor. So, win. Now I can start sanding the underside. I did a test running the same epoxy through the joiner and it chipped out pretty bad. So I think I'll play it safe and just tackle it by hand and add drum sander to my wish list. I'll give the top side a go on the planer though and that did nothing but get hung up on those clamping tabs. So I'll table that for now. In building out the rest of the panel, I'll select the straightest board for the longer pieces and the most undulating for the smaller ones to keep the final depth as thick as possible. So I'll just put the river section where I want it and then just lay out the subsequent pieces, mark them a little long, and chop them the length at the miter saw. I'll be sure to make the panel oversized now because I'll lose some real estate in jointing and cleaning up those edges for the glue seam. Now that it's all laid out, I'll label each piece, draw a wavy circle around the whole thing so I can line them back up, and snap a picture of it to reference should I need to. Each piece will get the bottom face and one edge jointed. Another quick tip, you can vastly improve the dust collection of your jointer by simply remembering to connect the hose back to it. And after each piece is prepped, I'll put it right back in its orientation and work my way down the line. Last bit of preparation is to rip the opposite edge on the table saw, trying to keep the width as large as possible for each piece. P.S. I did try to hit the bottom side of the river piece on the planer, and this was the result. So all signs are pointing to don't do it on the side that counts. So with that in mind, every piece except for the epoxy river piece will take a few trips through the planer. The final thickness of all pieces was dictated by the thinnest starting piece. Again, trying to keep everything as big as possible. I can then start the glue up, which I did in three stages, as I couldn't use any alignment aids. Dowels, dominoes, biscuits, etc. As I was going to be cross-cutting this whole panel up later, and I don't want to risk cutting into one. So I did a panel of five pieces, and then three more. For the final piece, I don't have clamps long enough, so the clamp-to-clamp -clamp method was used. After that was all dry, I'll use my track saw to cut the four sides, creating the final shape out of that amorphous mass of glued-up walnut. 
Before getting to sanding, I'll dig out and then drop in some epoxy in the knot holes and other defects that I see on the top. Now, I don't really like the belt sander. It seems way too aggressive. You leave it too long in one spot and now you've got a ditch in your piece. But I had a lot of material to remove on top, so I'll just be careful and make sure to stop well above the surrounding surface and just finish everything off with a long and laborious random orbital sander session. Now that my panel is complete, I can start cutting the stair pieces in orientation. First is the top step, then I'll rotate the blade 45 degrees to get the top riser, flip the board over and get the bottom riser, and then come back and hit the other 45 on the bottom step. While these pieces are all separate, I'll put a round over on the parts that make sense. And then start working on the support components. These are two by pressure treated blocks that I glued up and I'll make most of the remaining cuts on the table saw just backing it out when I get almost to the end and then finish shaping them at the bandsaw. I'll put some pocket holes in now because I clearly don't want any fasteners showing on my walnut panel. Now, after ripping the panel into pieces, each section is made up of relatively short pieces of walnut, and I don't fully trust that strength to span the gap between the two supports. So I'm going to add some three-quarter plywood to the support frame so that there will be no open air under the walnut steps, if that makes sense. And I fumbled a bit with how to attach these, but I got it all figured out in take two. Now I can head back down to the basement for some more epoxy, this time a glaze coat. And I'll make sure to let it run down the edges of the parts that will be visible. While that's curing, I'll paint the outside supports so that there's no taping off that has to happen later. Last bits of prep before assembly are to sand the mitered edge and the drippies from the underside. And paint the underside of the epoxy black as I noticed I could see through it a little bit. I didn't like that. Now it's just a matter of clamping each part into place and driving in some screws to hold it from the back, making sure not to put any screws directly into the epoxy river. Time to remove the old stairs with my wife supervising. The sledge, crowbar, and claw hammer ate this particle board up pretty quick. And I'll just remove the six years worth of debris that have accumulated under there and set it in place. As we know by now, the garage slopes toward the door, so I'll add some shims to bring it up to level, and then cut a pressure treated offcut to the thickness of those shims, and then glue them to the bottom. I'll set it back in place and draw a line on the wall where a bit of drywall needs to be trimmed away. And I'll use a couple of long pocket hole screws to make this part of the house. A couple of 18 gauge nails on some trim to hide that drywall edge, and this thing is done. Now to have a chat with my kids about not coloring on this. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more.